what he said. <laughs> I'll let Elvis business and all that. <laughs> I see my very special guests that we ride to. <laughs> uh, I've been telling my wife now for five years, six years, uh, about this place called the station. You gotta come, you gotta come to one of the shows when I play over there at the station, sweet. So this weekend it worked out. She was actually free and able to come. <laughs> But I made the mistake of uh, letting her go to dinner with some friends before the show. And uh, I don't know if they just got too drunk, or uh, they got lost, or they just decided they didn't want to come. No, they're actually here. I just saw them walk in. So I won't, I won't point her out to you yet. Yeah, I came an hour early and I played from 11.30 that night and I would have played all night if I could have because you don't often find little places like this. I mean, I've been lucky to play all over the world, really. Uh, certainly all over this country and in every state, I think. And um, I've seen some wonderful places, played in some beautiful rooms, uh, you know, highbrow low brow, you name it, I've been, I've I played them all, but there's something magic about this little old spot out here in the, in the middle of nowhere in the Tennessee Hills. I told my wife, I said, I don't know where they come from, all these people. Because <laughs> when I pulled up and saw it, I said, there ain't nobody going to come to the show here, and uh, lo and behold, they just start coming out of the, out of the, the hollers and the hills and the, I don't know where y'all live around here, but uh, I'm glad you know where the station is. I'm glad you came to see me another time. Thirty-seven years ago from Oklahoma I walked away from rock and roll To get my honky-tonk diploma I was hungry, young and hungry And I was looking for an offer And Miss Loretta Lynn, she took me in That sweet coal miner's daughter Bless her heart But she never did do one of my songs. <laughs> but one day she did say, now, darling, you should hang around with guys like Holyfield and Harlan. Now, let me explain to you who I mean when I say Holyfield and Harlan. Because these two people are very important in this whole story. Uh, when I say Holyfield, a lot of folks think I'm talking about that, that boxer. What's his name, Evander Holyfield? No. I'm talking about a great songwriter that came over to Nashville 10 years before I got there. He was, he was already writing big hits. Uh, his name is Wayland Holyfield. And you may not know his, his name, but you know his song. Wayland wrote stuff like... Uh, could I have this dance for the rest of my life? There you go. <laughs> See, that's Waylon Holyfield. And when I say Harlan, Holyfield and Harlan, when I say Harlan, I'm talking about another great songwriter that came down from Detroit City about the same time Waylon Holyfield did. And Harlan, Harlan Howard was his name. And Harlan wrote song. Well, Harlan wrote everything that Wayne and Holyfield didn't write. <laughs> For about 12, 15 years, every other hit song was a Harlan Howard or a Wayne and Holyfield song. And that's why Loretta Lynn sat me down one day and said, darling, you should hang around with guys 
so I called it Field and Harlan. She said they go to work and they smoke a cigar and they'll drink a glass of brandy. She said they write big hits and they leave big tips and they spend their evenings with their families. I said, that sounds perfect to me. Oh, but I'm glad she didn't tell me just how far I had to go. In this show we call the business, in this business we call show. So I played at the Hickory Holler Mall, and I played down at Union Station. I learned to do a pretty good Johnny Cash impersonation. And then one night he walked out of the bank. <laughs> I ain't lying, it was him and Miss June Carter. And he walked right up here in front of me and stood there and he said, Son, I have heard better. <laughs> yeah, but not one who tries harder. <laughs> It's a business we call show. And it was Waylon that introduced me to Mr. Jimmy Gilmer of the Fireballs. Now some of y'all might remember that name too. Jimmy Gilmer and the Fireballs. There's a crazy little shack beyond the track. There you go. Give me give her a fireball. It was Waylon Holyfield that introduced me to Jimmy Gilmer of the Fireballs. And together they convinced me that I could do it all. Yeah, but later it would come to pass. I just could not play that part. Cause I just could not kiss nobody's ass <laughs> to get my records on the charts. I just couldn't do it. Oh, but my mama, she's still waiting. She listens by the radio and she watches Facebook faithfully. I say, mama, it's just a show we call the business. It's just a business we call the show. sisters too. Here at home and on the road, this one goes out to you. When that print gets fine on that bottom line, don't you give away your soul. To this show we call the business, to this business we call show. It's just a show we call the business, y'all. It's just a business we call show.